Hello friends and welcome back to Homegrown and Homemade. We are back to the homegrown part of this show and today I thought it was time to do a full official garden tour. I have showed you how we prepared our garden beds. I've showed you what we planted in them, but I have yet to give you a full tour of the space. I've gotten lots of questions about how we built our raised beds, how we laid them out, all the measurements. So if you are interested in raised garden beds, the setup, what went into it, and also to get a sneak peek of our cut flower garden, which was the expansion that we did um, just before this spring, um, you're going to want to watch this episode. I'm going to walk through, give you a little walk through, and then start to answer some of the questions that um, I've gotten the most about our garden space. First up, we're going to talk about the flower garden section. Each of these sections contain roses on three corners with room to maybe fit a few more. Um, I planted some zinnia seeds along here, so those will get pretty tall and those are my good cut flowers. Honestly, I planted some along here too, and I don't even remember what exactly they were, but the idea is this will be full of blooming flowers come summer. I gotta show you this. Look, this bloom is new today. I'm so in love with it. And we have some space for some new roses, so if you see some holes, I have some roses coming from Grace Rose Farm that should be here within a few weeks. Um, these are also dahlias. So I planted dahlias on each of the straight borders on either side. Some are slower to come up than others. We did some mulch in here and then my husband found some of these stones on Marketplace. A girl hand makes them. So I just loved each little one has character and this is our fish pond that we recently made. All of those rocks came from uh, like back there. There's a creek that runs back there and John and Wyatt dug them all up and they were able to create this rock uh, waterfall. The fish are hiding. Every time they see me, they go under the rock. It's a little bit rude, but I love to hear the water. It's so relaxing. Over here, we'll head into our potted plants. Oh, and at nighttime, I put all these little solar lights um, on the corners, and then they're over there in the beds too. They light up and just make a cute atmosphere at night. This is my Meyer lemon tree. Y'all, we've got some lemons, baby lemons on here. Really excited about that. And some flowers coming here. Meyer lemons have the most gorgeous scent. And I keep this baby in a pot because I have had three citrus trees die on me every winter. Despite covering them and protecting them, they just do not like the cold. So 
when it gets really cold or freezing, I will bring that pot inside. Um, over here, got some geraniums, a bird bath that needs cleaned out, some basil tucked away in a pot. Planted something there, but it never came up. Then over here, <clears throat> have some rosemary in a pot. Smells so good. Sad little olive tree that I sadly think didn't make it. Rest in peace. And then the garden beds. Let's discuss those. Okay, so for each bed, we, all of these we used like a pretty cheap cedar fence post. So if you see some of them, they've got the little rounded edge, like it's a fence post. Um, <clears throat> they, we wanted it to be affordable and cedar is good for like pest repellent and it stays pretty sturdy in the weather. So um, each box me measures three feet by six feet, <clears throat> excuse me, three feet by six feet long. And they're about, I think he built them about 18 inches high. But now that we've put the gravel down here, um, it measured about 16 inches. I will tell you, you do not have to fill the whole thing up with dirt. You do not have to even build them that tall. I knew I wanted a tall look um, just for the look of it so that it's easier to reach and bend down and, you know, actually garden. So I preferred the taller look. You could literally build it with one of these on the ground, add in some compost and soil and call it a day. You do not have to go big um, at all. So. My husband just reinforced each corner with little wood posts like that. And the inside of the boxes with posts on either side there. And yeah, he knocked these out really fast. I'm really blessed with a handy husband. Um, we, the walkway in between, John said if he could do it over again, he would have left it where you could get a wheelbarrow in between, but I wanted the walk space, you know, to where I could get to either side of the beds. He did make the center aisle plenty wide for a wheelbarrow um, wagon, stuff like that. So these, I think it's about two feet in between them. And then this might be a four foot walkway. But um, we have eight beds, and in those eight beds, we're able to grow. No, oh, sorry, for the Dr. Pepper can. We have zucchini and squashes, green beans, more squashes, more green beans, tomato plants, green onions, carrots, more tomatoes, carrots. Um, radishes, a whole bunch of lettuces, cucumbers, it's my little celery popping up here. I've never grown celery. I'm excited to see that. Um, lots of peppers, okra, more cucumbers. Is this not funny? Look at the cucumbers on this side, already getting big looking beautiful and this side is like hey late to the party don't give up on me though y'all patience sometimes it just takes longer than others um what's over here this is my mystery surprise bed um i had a bunch of volunteer tomatoes pop up so i decided to put a cage and go with it these are eggplant I have two sections of eggplant because they do get kind of big, but, um, and then this bed is like going crazy. Um, that lettuce is out of control. I got cilantro. This is like the herb, herb bed and oh no, one of those fuzzy, 
caterpillars is eating my snapdragon. Um, dill, chives, um, cilantro, parsley, rosemary did not come up, lavender did not come up. Oh, is that lavender or that might be a little basil? Um, lavender didn't sprout, basil definitely did, and then this basil is looking pretty. So, um, that covers the raised beds. Oh, so we put a metal border and um, did crushed granite. You could do mulch, you could do just dirt, um, pea gravel, um, but we liked the look of crushed granite. So that's what we went with. And then I love my vegetables. I love cooking. But y'all, I love my roses. And so on either side of the um, raised beds are roses on the back side. So I've got four over here. And then I've got two climbers here. They're a little slow to take off, but this is their second year. So I am waiting for the day that they will grow up and over that arch. I'll come back and update y'all when it does that. So I have two climbing roses and then the four roses on this side. And I just keep finding places to put new roses because they keep coming home with me. So this one is a climbing variety. This is America. And I'm not, I'm gonna see, my husband built this um, swing. I'm gonna see how to maybe make it climb the swing pole. But this is an America over here and the same over here. So we have my favorite spot in the garden. The sunset comes right through those trees. Got the hammock over there. That is a future tree house in the making. And behind, we just keep expanding, behind the um, like official garden area is a new expansion of sunflowers. We planted these from seed. They're already popping up, looking good. And we also planted a row of watermelon and cantaloupe. So I'm fighting the caterpillars right now. And this was a grassy patch, so there's a lot of grass growing up in it. I had someone ask me like, how do we handle the weeds in here? In the beds is not too bad because it's kind of like a controlled space, but there's definitely weeds that come up. Like this was my bucket. Plus I had a bucket I dumped in the uh, burn pile, but literally the old fashioned way, I just go through and pull them up. So it's much easier to like pull them when you see them rather than waiting until it's overwhelming. But yeah, I think that covers the whole garden tour. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tour. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below, like, and subscribe. Next week, I have a special episode coming your way, a recipe from a grandma that didn't make the cookbook. There are lots of recipes that I went through for my cookbook process and unfortunately I could not include all of them or the book would probably be about this thick. So um, I'm going to be sprinkling in a few recipes on my show and my feed that um, are great recipes but didn't make it in this cookbook. So thank you again. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy gardening and happy cooking.